Welcome back to Dedicate Cuts. The IMO 2023 will be held in Japan next week. And today I have a really interesting number theory question from the Japan Math Olympiad 2023 to share with you. This problem is absolutely beautiful and mind-blowing because it uses a few different concepts from number theory and makes for a great problem for review. So without further ado, let us take a look at what this problem says. So before going to the problem, I would like to remark that the Japan Math Olympiad Finals actually only have 5 problems. So problem 4 is actually a non-trivial problem. So you'll see that the solution is quite uh, a bit involved, but stay with it because it is a good review for many different concepts. Uh, so let us take a look at what the problem says, which is basically to determine all positive integers n, such that n divides uh, 5n to the dn plus 1, but dn to the 5 does not divide n to the 5n minus 1. So right off the bat, we already see that there's some uh, complicated looking expressions around, but not to worry because every time you see something like this, the first thing you should do is write down the expressions for 5n and dn. So first we write down if n is of the form p1 to the a1 times uh, all the way to pr to the ar, then indeed first recall that 5n is given by this expression. So I, will, I always like to uh, recall the expression by remembering that if I have a power of p, uh, prime, then uh, the fraction of relatively prime numbers is p minus 1 over p. Uh, because all the, the numbers that are not multiples of p will be relatively prime. So once I write this down and then I just write the product of all of them, then I'll be able to uh, cancel the common copy of uh, pi and then I'll get this uh, simplified expression, uh, which is what we will be using for the rest of the problem. Okay, uh, that's 5n and dn is much simpler. dn is just basically uh, the powers plus 1 and then you take the product. Okay, so that aside, let us now see how we can finally uh, approach this problem. Now, the first thing to uh, notice uh, is that, well, it looks like n and 5n share a lot of common factors, right? But we have n divides something about 5n plus 1, and this looks very suspicious. So indeed, if some power uh, ai is bigger than 1, then we have the prime divides n, and the prime again, uh, divides 5n, which means the prime divides 1, which is definitely not good. So this tells us that all the a i is equals to 1, and you know that you have just made a first important step, because that greatly simplifies our expressions here. It tells us that n is just the product of distinct primes, and 5n is basically then just the product of pi minus 1, and dn is even simpler, it's just 2 times 2 times 2 r times, so it's 2 to the power of r. So very good, give yourself a pat on the back. Now, what's next? Well, before we go any further, let us first uh, get rid of some co uh, corner cases so that the rest of the proof can proceed cleanly. Uh, I mean, the first corner case that you want to check is n equals to 1. Uh, and indeed, n cannot be 1 because in that case, dn will be 1, and 1 definitely divides everything. So uh, the second condition would be violated. Uh, so n is not equal to 1. That is a good thing to establish because then we know there's definitely some prime factors in the prime factorization. Okay, that makes things much cleaner. But the other case that we also want to check is what if n is just equal to a prime itself? Uh, it's not so clear why you want to check this case separately, but it will become clearer in the next uh, slide. So just bear with it. Let's check n equals to p separately. If that's the case, you can directly work out that 5n is p minus 1 and dn is 2. So the first condition says that p divides p minus 1 squared plus 1. Okay, this means minus 1 squared plus 1 is congruent to 0 mod p. 2 is congruent to 0 mod p. So p is equal to 2. This So the first condition forces p equals 2, but does it satisfy the second condition? Uh, this one can be directly checked. You just check, oh, 2 to the 5 indeed does not divide 2 to the 1 minus 1. So, indeed, n equals 2 is a solution. Okay, and the reason why we check this annoying case separately is now we can establish that there's at least two prime factors uh, in n. And why is this important? Well, it tells us that 
in phi n, right, at least one of the prime factors is not 2, which means the, at least one of the terms here is even, which means phi n is even, which means this thing is odd. You cannot have even divide odd. So it tells us that n is forced to be odd. So n is forced to be odd. Let's write that down. It means none of the prime factors must be equal to 2. So this is another useful uh, fact to establish. And we will need to use this fact that n is odd uh, later on. Uh, what's next? Okay, now we really, really tackle the problem uh, head on. Let's take a look at the first condition and analyze it. n divides this. Well, n is a product of prime, so usually it's useful to just in look at individual prime divides the, the expression. So let's write that down. We have 5n to the dn is 2 to the r congruent to minus 1 mod pi. From here, you will see that minus 1 is uh, something nice to have because if you square both sides, you will now get 1 on the right side. So 5n to the 2 to the r plus 1 is congruent to 1 mod pi. And these two things should ring a bell because something to the power of something congruent 1 tells us that this is a candidate for the order. So recall that the order is the smallest power to which you raise and then you get congruent to 1 uh, mod uh, under the mod, right? So uh, it tells us that firstly the order divides uh, 2 to the r plus 1 but because 2 to the r doesn't work as a it doesn't give you congruent to 1 uh, so it means that the order is definitely 2 to the r plus 1. So 2 to the r plus 1 is the order of 5n under mod pi. And uh, what does this tell us? Here's another number theory fact. The order divides p minus 1. So in this case, we have 2 to the r plus 1 divide p minus 1. Well, you know that actually you are on the right track because this seems to impose a very strong condition. Uh, why did I say so? Well, we have p minus 1 appearing a whole bunch here. So it tells us that Actually, 2 to the r times r plus 1 divides 5n. Just repeat this thing, sub this thing into uh, the definition of 5n. And whenever you see like some huge power of uh, a number divides 5n, right, uh, divides something, this looks like something very special, very significant situation. And that should help you realize that you are now restricting the possible scenarios very tightly. So this, this is an intuition to tell you that yeah, your analysis is going down the right track. Now, at this point, it's good uh, juncture to re review another notation from number theory, which is the valuation function. So this v sub 2 means what is the largest power of 2 that divides the thing in the bracket. So in this case, uh, v sub 2 of 5n is at least r times r plus 1. Okay. And there's another implication that we have realized here from this thing, which is we can write pi as congruent to 1 mod 2 to the r plus 1. And again, n is a product of all the pi's. So you have n is congruent to 1 mod 2 to the r plus 1. And again, this is a useful, you realize that you are actually on the right track and doing something useful because again, you have a large power of 2 uh, dividing n minus 1. So in this case, the v of n minus 1 is at least r plus 1. So this looks like very uh, strong conditions to have uh, on the scenario at hand. Okay, let's keep this at the back of our mind for now and turn to the second uh, condition here. So the second condition is talking about dn to the power of 5 does not divide this, right? And what's dn? dn is a power of 2. So we are saying this power of 2 does not divide this. And at this juncture, everything, all the alarm bells in your head should go off. Uh, because the previous slide is about powers of 2 dividing stuff. This slide is about power of 2 not dividing stuff. So it sounds that the two put together will give you a very strong conclusion. So indeed, let us analyze what is uh, V of this expression here. And at this juncture, you realize that this is actually quite complicated looking. You have powers and all that. Uh, and this should remind you of another fact from number theory, which is the lifting the exponent lemma. So this lemma has been rising in popularity in all the peers, like over the past couple of years. So make sure you uh, go to Wikipedia, read the statement and memorize it. Uh, there's also a video that I've done before on this uh, lemma, which you can find at the end of this video. 
So make sure you study this lemma hard because you never know when it will come out again. But uh, for the case uh, P equals 2 in the lemma, it says that if uh, the base uh, is not divisible by 2, that is the base is odd, but if the power is even, then uh, V of the expression can be written as very simply terms without powers. So this is quite uh, much more simpler to evaluate. So in our case, n is odd as we have established, 1 is odd and the power is even. So we can write down this expression and many of the terms look familiar. In fact, this is what we had just established on the previous slide. So now we see everything coming together and we know that we are on our way to solving the problem. Uh, so let's substitute in the inequalities. We have uh, this is this and uh, m plus 1 is uh, a difference of 2 from m minus 1. So this m plus 1 is definitely deserved by 2 but not 4. So we have 1 here and then uh, this third term is given by here and minus 1 is from the formula. Okay. And this simplifies to a quadratic expression. So what we have the looking back at the non-divisibility condition is that the quadratic must be at most 5r minus 1 because otherwise uh, it is greater than or equal to 5r then uh, this thing is greater than or equal to 5r which will violate the non-divisibility condition. So this inequality must hold and you can just solve the quadratic and conclude that r is uh, 1 or 2. We are in the regime where r is greater than or equal to 2 so it gives us r equals 2 as the only candidate now. But r equals 2 is a tight situation. We are at the bound of the inequality. So all the inequality must be equality. And in particular, this inequality here must uh, therefore be a equality. Which means that each of the inequality here must actually be an equality. So can this happen? Well, let's take a look. So this first inequality comes from the divisibility condition here. For the equality to be tight, it means that uh, 2 to the r plus 1, recall r is 2 here, so that's 8. 8 divides pi minus 1, but 16 does not divide pi minus 1, and this is uh, true for all pr uh, pr primes p1 and p2. Okay, And for the second uh, inequality, uh, we must have equality, so v of m minus 1 is equal to 3. So 8 divides n minus 1, but 16 does not divide n minus 1. And together you can see that we are on our way to contradiction because the first scenario says that p1 and p2 are congruent to 9 mod 16, which means p1, p2 is congruent to 81 mod 16, which is 1 mod 16. So this violates the second condition here. So this gives us the needed contradiction. So indeed, uh, now we have no other solutions. The only solution was n equals to 2. So that is all for uh, this video. And I hope you found this video really uh, useful because it revealed quite a bit of concepts from number theory. And if you are not familiar with the LT lemma, do check out the video shown on the screen right now. And stay tuned to the channel for more math videos. Subscribe and see you soon.